this goes back to the idea that I think we all feel pretty stoked about their defense, their defense, especially since the turn into 2022 has one of, been one of the top three defenses in the NBA. And you feel like for a good chunk of the year, it's been really good. But their offense, uh, as of a couple of days ago, I need to update my numbers here. They were 24th in the league in offensive points. And then there was an article that we like started this whole conversation kind of bouncing off of from Mavs Moneyball about the perspective, and this is Josh Bow right here, is the perspective of what's the balance that you have to have to have a good enough offense to balance out no matter how good your defense is. I would say yes, because when we... Help me if I'm wrong here. When I think of championship teams, yes, you have to have some sort of level of defense. I don't think you can be below average and win a championship, but I also don't think you can be an average offense and win a championship. I just think of, boy, they have options. They have different ways of scoring the basketball. And right now, I do think the Mavericks, they're not bad offensively, but I would say they seem to at times be limited offensively. What do you mean? What do you mean by limited? Like shots don't fall and they don't have something else to go to? Luca do it. And if you kick it to a three point shooter, make your three. And that's our offense. We, we're not a transition team. We're not like, boy, we create turnovers and we get out on breaks and we can play fast. Like the Mavericks just don't play fast. That's who kind of they are and then yeah i saw i saw uh uh chris henderson earlier see hindo talking with somebody who said look if if they play jaw and the grizzlies and it turns into a, a a track a track race like i think the mavericks are done and i think they can play against the grizzlies i certainly do think that yeah. you have a, a good comparison there but yeah the mavericks typically don't like to play fast games and then i just feel like it's just solely based off of Luca, And we talked about that earlier. Hopefully that changes. Hopefully Dinwiddie can really become more of a secondary option and Brunson can still be the secondary option that he's seeming to become uh, during this season. But I feel like for, for the first time in the three years that they are going to be a playoff team, year one, they lose in the bubble. Year two, they lose here in seven and then here in year three, and we don't know who they're going to play. Most likely it'll be Memphis or Utah in round one. I feel like they can get out of the first round. That that It's going to be a tougher decision for me than Clippers in six, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. So I was looking at the numbers and kind of the, the metric is, so Josh took every team that's won a playoff series from 2011 to last season. All right, 88 teams. The average offensive rank of those 88 teams, eighth. Okay. Okay? And I told you the Mavericks are sitting at about 24th. Yikes. When you go back through, I know, not good. When you go back to 2016, when you can say his idea was, you can say that teams started chasing the Warriors' offensive juggernaut, only four teams have won with an offensive rating 15th or worse. Okay, which is where the Mavericks sit. Those teams, the 2016 Hawks, they were second in defense. The 2018 Jazz, second in defense. The 2018 Celtics, first in defense. And the 2020 Raptors, second in defense. And all of those teams, they were 22nd, 16th, 18th, and 16th. So they were all... Similar rankings exactly. to, the, to the Mavericks of 2021. Exactly. One of those won a championship? I don't think any of them did. I, 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 I thought I the Toron so. Toronto was the year before then. Yeah, 19 was their okay. championship. All right. So uh, then the next level for the Mavs, though, is winning a series or two. Yes. That'd Agreed. Be a major step. Agreed. Winning okay. a series would be just a major step for this team. Okay. And with that, let me ask you this, because... You have poo pooed my you can't make 100% of your free throws, which I understand. <laughs> you try. Are you willing to accept they win a series and get bounced in the second round? Does that still feel like tangible progress to you? And the word bounced makes it sound worse. And then lose in the second round? Yes. Yeah, not only lose. Let's say they lose in five games. That's, that, that's like, I don't want them to get embarrassed in the second round. 
That's the one. I don't. I would love to win a series and be competitive in the second round. Would the outcome of the rest of that change your mind? Let's say they lose to the Suns in five, and then the Suns beat the Warriors in five, and then the Suns beat the Bucks in six. Okay, yeah, and they just like, like they just like they annihilate the rest yeah, of everybody. Yeah, that would make sense. I will be okay with them losing to the Suns or the Warriors in a seven game series. I would be so happy to see progress made with Luka being the leader of the team that you beat either Utah or Memphis. Because when people say the West is wide open, right, we say, well, no, it's not yeah. really. It's it's the Phoenix Suns or Golden State Warriors Conference. And then there is wide openness between 3 and 10 of could you see, uh, you know, a team like Denver upsetting Memphis in the first round? Yes. Could you see Dallas upsetting Utah in the – yes. I don't think I can see right now Minnesota or the Lakers or – the Clippers beating Phoenix or Golden State in the first round of the playoffs, unless there's major injuries that are happening with, uh, let's just say, the Golden State Warriors. Like, if the Golden State Warriors have to run out the team that we just played against, yeah, that great win. I do not want to take away. That was an awesome win uh, to win that game on the road and be down by 20-plus points and Steph Curry be uh, on the court and to win that game. But if the Golden State Warriors run out that team and they do not have Draymond Green, they do not have Klay Thompson, they do not have Andre Iguodala, I don't, they never have James Wiseman, but just throw them out <laughs> if they don't have him. <laughs> don't. Like, Then I would say, well, I can see the Lakers beating that Golden State Warriors team type of deal, or I maybe could see Timberwolves are playing pretty good basketball of late. I could maybe see that, but, but if they're healthy, they're not going to lose. But back to our Dallas Mavericks, I love this kind of breaking down the numbers because – I would have had no idea that we are struggling that much offensively. Yeah. I, I get that we play slow, but sometimes that, that you know, efficiency, like, hey, if you play slow, are you efficient playing yeah. slow basketball? Because when you do look at points scored, out of the top seven teams in the Western Conference, when you look at points scored, every team is averaging at least 110 plus points or more, and the Mavericks are averaging 106.7. Wow. If that just to give you an idea of average points per game, I know that's a very basic stat I'm looking at. Do you know how many teams in the West have less than them? One. Ooh, Nate, Oklahoma Nate, City Oklahoma Thunder. City. Oh. Wow.